Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. What we've seen in the last couple days is uh, something we haven't seen for a while. Uh, stocks around the world are kind of selling off right now. In the United States, it's the worst sell-off we've seen in eight months. And worldwide, if we look at the global index, the FTSE, it's the largest drop we've seen. It's, it went the lowest it's we've seen since April. So what is your perspective on why stocks are selling off right now? And um, where are they headed? Well, first of all, Elijah, eight months is not very much in the big scheme of things. Uh, even April, which is six months, is not so much in the big scheme of things. So I know we're all very worried when the market goes down six or seven percent. But even six or seven percent is meaningless in the big scheme of things. Now, having said that, uh, we may be, <laughs> it may be the end. This may be uh, the end is finally here. You know, it's been 10 years since we had a serious uh, bear market in the United States. That's the longest in, in recorded history. So we may be ready. It may be, this may be the beginning of a big bear market. The way bear markets work, Elijah, as you well know, is they start where nobody's looking. In 2007, Iceland went bankrupt. Well, nobody cared or knew or even knew if there was an Iceland. And then Ireland went bankrupt. And then Northern Rock went bankrupt. Then Bear Stearns went bankrupt. And by then, some people started to say, well, wait a minute, something's going on. And by the time Lehman Brothers went bankrupt, everybody knew. It was in the front page of the papers and the evening news. And we all knew a year and a half or so later that there was a serious bear market in the works. That's the way things work. Now, we have had things like that happening in the last year or so. Turkey, Venezuela, Argentina, Indonesia, Indian banks, Latvia. You know, there are things that nobody cares about or pays attention to, and they're all very, very small. But... It may be the snowball, maybe gathering speed, and this may be it. I don't know. You should watch your show and find out. <laughs> hey, Jim, I noticed uh, a lot of people talking about the parity trade between bonds and stocks has kind of changed a little bit. I guess in the last two de decades or so, or even longer, uh, um, with interest rates you know, constantly going down, it seems, uh, it looks like they kind of worked in parity as far as, you know, one asset class would go up and the other would go down. But I know you traded a lot in the 70s and 80s when that wasn't the case, right, when the parity didn't work. Are you noticing a little bit of a change? <clears throat> well, of course, the interest rates in the United States, the, <clears throat> the bear market, or depending on how you look at it, interest bonds made their low in 1981 and went up for the next 35 years or so. Uh, you. You pick whichever year you want to say was the, the bottom or the, or the top, depending on how you look at it. A previous uh, bull market in bonds, by the way, in the United States lasted 35 years also. There's no magic to that number, I don't think, but I, it may be coincidental. So anyway, bonds have been going up a long, long time. Nearly everybody in the market only knows interest rates going down. That's going to change. It is changing. It's going to change. The interest rates are going to go much, much higher, not just in the U.S., but all over the world. You know, this has never happened in recorded history, what we've seen. Interest rates in some countries became negative. Many countries became negative. This has never, ever happened. 
The American Central Bank, followed by other central banks, started off with an experiment. They had no idea what they were doing. They will sometimes acknowledge in private that this is an experiment. Well, it's a horrible, horrible mistake. We're all going to pay a terrible price for this horrible mistake because interest rates went to very, very artificial levels, never before in history, and now they're going to go back up again. Somebody's going to pay a lot of money. I hope I'm not one of them. I hope nobody watching this show is is involved. But, no, it's going to be disastrous for many people. Hey, Jim, just to follow up on that, I mean, they never seem to let the markets clear and do their work. I mean, do you expect them to intervene again at some point in the, you know, in the downturn? Of course they are. Are you kidding? These guys are bureaucrats and academics. They don't know what they're doing. And right. Mr. Trump, of course, is going to shriek to the high heavens about what, how horrible this is. No, when things get really bad, uh, the, everybody's going to call up. And say, you've got to save us. You've got to save Western civilization. It's not Western civilization. It's me. Save me is what they mean. But so the central bank is going to do something, cut interest rates, buy assets. Who knows what they will do? And the market will have a rally. The market will certainly rally because people will say, ah, they've come and they're saving us again. But after that rally, boy, that's when the real horrible part of the bear market is going to come. So be worried. Be worried. Okay. Now, one of the things kind of get on the stock market, about the stock market, is that if we look at the U.S., um, if you look at the total uh, cap of the stock market, it's about 140% of GDP. Now, normally it's around 60%. So some people have argued that it seems to be overvalued by more than two times. What is your perspective on that? And if we see this kind of crash that you're talking about, could it fall more than 50%? It always falls more than 50% in bear markets. That's what bear markets are. Uh, I mean, I, I laugh, but I, I've lived, to, I've seen several, and I've read about many more. Bear markets are, are not fun. A lot of people get wiped out and destroyed. Uh, bear markets come along and clean out excesses. It, you know, it's like a forest fire. Forest fires are horrible if you're there. But in the end, the forest fire cleans out the dead wood, the underbrush, and the forest can grow with renewed vigor and strength afterwards. Well, that's what bear markets do. That's what recessions do. That's one of the the beauty, shall I say, of capitalism, I, I, don't, I don't want to be misunderstood in that. I'm just saying that that's how the world is supposed to work, and it always has worked. So, yes, the next one's going to be the, next one's going to be the worst in my lifetime, and I think I'm older than both of you guys, maybe older than both of you put together. <laughs> you know, in, in 2008, we had a problem because of too much debt. Elijah, since then, the debt has gone much, much, much higher all over the world. So the next, and when I say this, it doesn't sound strange to me. When I say the next is going to be the worst in my lifetime, it certainly seems a very simplistic, simple, logical statement. The debt is staggering. Hey, Jim, last time we spoke with you, we were talking about, uh, you know, that potential trade that you might make in the future when gold and silver possibly do a downturn. Uh, you know, obviously right now they, they popped a little bit today. It looks like there was a risk on trade for, for gold. It, it did pretty good. Um, but uh, there's a lot of people out there who speculate that if there is big trouble in China or in Europe, with Italy, fave, for instance, um, there may be a, a further flight to the U.S. dollar and strengthening in the U.S. dollar, which may put downward pressure on precious metals. But what in, in terms of, you know, the way you look at it, what are some of the key signs that you'll feel or see that, that really are going to be that point where it's, okay, it's time to go into precious metals again? James, you said if there are going to be big problems in Europe. Maybe I haven't made myself clear. <laughs> okay. the, next, the next bear market is going to be the worst in my lifetime. I don't know when it's coming. 
You guys should, are supposed to know when it's coming. I said it might be here. I don't know. I wish I knew. I wish I was smart enough. But the next one is going to be a nightmare for everybody. I own a lot of U.S. dollars for the reasons you said. In times of turmoil, people look for a safe haven. They think the U.S. dollar is a safe haven. It's not. It, the U.S. is the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. I don't particularly like saying that, given that I'm an American citizen, taxpayer, and voter, but facts are facts. That's why I own a lot of U.S. dollars. I also own some gold and silver, but I haven't bought any serious gold and silver for eight years, since 2010. Uh, but I'm waiting to buy more. My expectation is that we're going to have a horrible bear market. The dollar's going to go up a lot, get overpriced, could even turn into a bubble, at which point I'm going to sell my U.S. dollars at the top. You see how easy it is to get rich? (laughs) I'm going to sell my U.S. dollars at the top and maybe buy gold. Because often, as you have said, when the dollar's strong, gold goes down. So that would be, oh, what a wonderful, simple trade that would be. Sell my my dollars at the top and put it in the gold, a depressed gold market. Hey, that, Jim, is you, part, that is part of my planning. Do you see any chance in that scenario where both the dollar and gold could be going up simultaneously? Of course. James, yeah. I've been around long enough to know that anything can happen. Right. Don't, say, don't tell me it cannot happen. Don't tell me it's never happened. I know things can happen that have never happened. Yes, it could happen. Do I expect it? No. I expect another opportunity to buy gold. Now, gold and silver right now are are certainly set up for a big rally. As you know, the short interest in gold and silver a week ago was the highest ever. I mean, it was staggering how high the short interests were. That is nearly always a setup. For a big rally, so gold and silver are ready, and for a big rally, I'm not participating. I mean, I own it, but I'm not particip- I'm not jumping in. I'm waiting for the last collapse if it happens. It may not happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And speaking of uh, precious metals, and kind of, you're saying that when this crash happens, it might dip, kind of like we saw in 2008. You know, last time we had you on, you were talking about sub one thousand dollar gold, possibly. Um, so why do you think, though, in these last couple of days, I know this is very short term, but, like, why have precious metals held up so well while the stocks are falling? Gigantic short position mainly, and people are panicked, and where do we go? Uh, first, often the first instinct is U.S. dollars and gold and silver that frequently for historic reasons, but as you point out in 2008 and in other bear markets, after they get over that initial rally in gold and silver, then they collapse with everything else. Uh, I have no idea. I told you, huge short position. I've watched the huge short position. I've said to myself, boy, if I were smart, I would get in because the rally is coming. Problem is, I'm lazy. And so I haven't, I haven't bought gold and silver, although I expect this rally to be a very handsome rally. Uh, and then, then later, we will have the final collapse in gold and silver. But it may not happen that way, guys. Listen, I'm a terrible, terrible market timer, and I own gold and silver. If I never buy any more gold and silver, my children will be very happy with the gold and silver they will inherit someday. Hey, Jim, can we turn tables, baby, to China? Uh, I know that there's a lot of people out there who look at China and they, they see the amount of yuan that they've printed over the last 10, 15 years, fixing up their infrastructure and what have you. Obviously, there's probably a lot of malinvestment there as well. Um, and most of the yuan that's been printed is it's contained. It's not a, a currency that's highly traded out around the world. So. A lot of people, when they look at the, the trade of the yuan versus the dollar, and they look at the amount of yuan versus how many dollars are out there, they they think that the trade obviously it's seven to one, and it's a pegged currency, so it's obviously pretty 
you know, obviously managed. Uh, but when people look at it, they think it should be more like 20 or 25 to 1. Uh, so how do we get from, you know, uh, uh, currently where we are, from the 7 to 1 yuan, and eventually to a situation where the yuan may be actually traded further around the world? How does that go? Do, do, do they bring up some type of a new bond issuance with gold involved? Do you see something like that in the future? And what would it take for you to put your your currency into yuan or into Chinese bonds? Well, uh, I do. I own some renminbi, not a lot. I, own, I told you before, I own huge amounts of U.S. dollars yeah. because of what's coming. Uh, but I do own renminbi and, and would love to buy more. I hope that, you know, they have been making it more and more convertible for a few years. Back to the previous trade where I got rich, you know, where I sold my dollars at the top. Uh, who knows if the red men be convertible by by then? When I sell my dollars, I might put it into the red men be instead of gold, mm -hmm. uh, instead of gold and silver, depending on how the world is evolving. Because eventually, the red men be is going to be a very powerful currency. The concept of twenty red men be for a dollar is mind-boggling to me. But it could say, look, anything can happen. China now has debt. And you're going to see bankruptcies in China, which is going to surprise a lot of people, including me. And I just told you it's coming, James. Uh, mm. But it's going to surprise and terrify a lot of people, probably including me. And that could cause any kind of distortion in the currency market, especially if it is convertible by them. But the fundamentals for the renminbi are much, much stronger. You talk about printing money. James, look out the window. U.S. dollar, how many have they printed? Look at the yen. Oh, my God, the yen. You know, the head of the central bank, we said in public, officially, we will print unlimited amounts of money if we have to. He said unlimited. He meant it. He meant it. Uh, you know, the Europeans said we will do whatever is necessary uh, to, to, to print whatever it takes. That's exactly mm -hmm. what they said. So everybody's been printing a lot of money. It's not just the Chinese. Right. But, yes, eventually I expect China will be affected by the coming crisis. Everybody will be affected. Every currency is going to go down against the dollar, including the renminbi, uh, in my view. And as I said, I don't know how it's going to unfold, but I hope I'm smart enough to sell the dollar when the time comes and put the money into something else, whether it's renminbi or gold or rubles. Who knows? <laughs> right. yep. Who knows? It could right. be rubles. Strange things happen in, yep. in bear markets. There's a lot of gold in Russia, and they've been pretty prudent with the way that they've spent their money. So I, I definitely understand what you're saying. The Russians don't have much debt. It's one of the countries out there that doesn't have much debt. I mean, who would lend money to Stalin? Who would lend no. money to the to the USSR? Nobody uh, would lend money to the communists. So, fortunately for them, that means they're in a situation where they don't have much debt, like a lot of other countries, like North Korea. I mean, North Korea doesn't have any debt. Who's going to lend money to, to the kid? Nobody. So some of these countries are going to come out of this in better shape relatively than other people. Right. Now, you talked about how, you know, when it comes time to move out of the dollar into other, maybe other currencies or gold, uh, you hope you're smart enough to do that. Like, what is your perspective on, like, for the average person who's wanting to do that as well, what are some of the signposts you might be looking out for? Well, I know, I think I know the dollar's going to get overvalued. Uh, that will be pretty clear. You just go back and look at historic charts, and you look at things like purchasing power. Uh, when an ice cream in, in New York is expensive compared to Paris, or very expensive, you know, then you say, ah, well, maybe something's going on. These are fairly simple, standard things that have happened throughout history. To turn into a bubble, I mean, bubbles look the same, too no matter what the asset and no matter what the country and no matter when. If it turns into a bubble, I mean, you, you'll know as well as I do. Well, most people deny it's a bubble. You know, but people will be screaming to buy U.S. dollars. Kids will be leaving college to become currency traders. You know, everybody will know that the only safe thing in the world is the U.S. dollar. And then I'll sell. 
and then it'll go higher. I promise you, I'll sell too soon. I always do. Uh, the signs of all bubbles and all overvalued markets are the same. The, the key is, of course, timing, which I'm terrible at. I have to ask you guys when to sell. But just watch, watch for symptoms of overvaluation. You mentioned before a symptom of the U.S. stock market, which may mean it's overvalued. There are symptoms, historic symptoms in every market, which we can look at to say, hey, it's certainly expensive. That does not mean it cannot get more more expensive, I assure you. Bubbles are really, really insane. But those are all symptoms which every market and anybody who's any student of any market should start to recognize those symptoms. Hey, Jim, uh, one final question for me. I mean, I know commodities right now are about as cheap as they've ever been relative to other asset classes. I've looked personally at various investments in farming and stuff like that, especially in South and Central America. It looks like there's some interesting opportunities in emerging markets. Are there any commodities right now that you're really key on that you're seeing that you think, uh, you know, maybe in the next few years or something you might want to play in? Well... I, I will tell you that agriculture is cheap. I would have told you last year, too, that agriculture is cheap. But like many bear markets, things get cheaper, just like in bull markets. People things get overvalued, and then they get more overvalued. That's the way markets work. But certainly agriculture, I mean, sugar is very, very cheap on a historic basis. Uh, if you want to buy precious metals, silver is cheaper than gold. Uh, you know, you can look at the four precious metals and see which one is cheapest, maybe palladium right now. Uh, there's some, some, some of the precious metals, so look at the ratios and you'll figure out which one if you want to buy. But I would say agriculture, maybe uh, sugar, just get them all out and look at them and say, ah, you know, I don't know if you know this because you may not be old enough, but sugar is down over 80% from its all-time high. Wow. I mean, there's not much in the world that's down over 80% from its all-time high. Wow. Uh, that does not mean it cannot go down 90% sure. from its sure. all-time high. Sure. But it's certainly, it's, certainly, it's certainly getting cheaper than it was before. Thank you for that. All right. Well, Jim Rogers, thank you so much for your time today. I guess uh, before we let you go, where can our viewers find you online and uh, any last thoughts you had? Well, I don't have anything to sell online. I mean, I have a <laughs> website, but it's really just my, my speaking of appearances and, and the log of but I went I went around the world a couple of times, and it's the, the log of my last trip, but that was years ago. Uh, I don't have anything to sell, Elijah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you can buy my books, but books are not going to make me make me rich. Uh, but anyway, if you want, you can go online. I mean, some of my interviews appear, uh, some of my books appear. My kids are starting to appear. My kids are making me famous in Asia because they they speak uh, speak Chinese. My my little one, who's ten years old, has just been had a part in the first. Chinese blockbuster that they really? say is the first Chinese. Yeah, this is a ten year old girl. What, they call what's it called? What's it's it called? Coming out, it it's, coming, it's coming out next summer. It's called something like the Crater, the Cavern. Uh, okay. I don't. I, I'm not. I can't. I don't speak Chinese. But it will, they're they're shooting it in English and they're shooting it in Chinese at the same time because they're going to distribute it in both markets.